Hello everyone. We will start a new unit, okay? Unit number five, that is conformations. So, what is conformations? It's like molecule is there. Now it wants to turn his hand, turn his leg. Which all bonds are going to freely rotate? It will try to simply move around because a lot of energy is there around, a lot of energy it has. That is conformations. Imagine you are a molecule. Right now in lockdown, what is the most uh, preferred conformations by you? Most preferred conformation for most of you will be lying down, 180 degrees flat, okay? So that's the most stable conformer because that is having least amount of energy. Least amount of energy is required by that. That is the most stable conformer and you spend 90% of that, okay? But in 10% you go through lot of unstable conformers. You, you will be standing, you will be sitting, you will be dancing, uh, you will be cooking, a lot of things. You will be exercising, even though there is no need of it, but you will be doing all that. Because you have a lot of energy, you don't know what to do. You have to do something interesting, okay? So, imagine when you are dancing, you are almost standing to your one toe. Very, very unstable conformer. But you still go through that and come back to your sleeping conformation. Similarly, molecule also has low energy conformation where it stays almost like 99%, okay? And the rest it goes through various other conformations. And many times these conformations are important, not many times, every time it is important for any reaction to happen. And when that reaction happens, and most of the time, that conformation through which the key step happens is very, very unstable. Very, very highly energetic conformer. But still it happens because if that, it does not undergo through that conformation, then the reaction won't happen. Imagine when somebody bowls in, in cricket. It almost goes to one toe, okay, thumb, uh, the leg toe. And then he bowls. Very, very unstable conformer. But until he goes through that conformer, he cannot bowl. So similarly, molecules also, okay. So this is just the introduction of it. Let us start with ethane molecule. Everybody knows CS3, CS3. So between these two hydrogen and these two carbon, there is only single bond, one single bond, okay. So th this single bond is free flowing bond, okay. It's free rotating bond, it's zoop, 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 it, it can go like that. There's no problem at all. Similarly, this CH bond, single bond that can also rotate, but we won't uh, be able to see a lot of conformers. We'll be able to see conformers when these two carbon rotates. So um, let us talk a little bit about the various formula projection formula till now most of the times i always write in this form wedge and dash structure wedge and dash projection formula i can say though i called it main time sawhorse but that is wrong the right one is wedge and dash so to understand this molecule most of you write till now a lot of you write in wrong way like this angle you have to understand it is 109 degrees it's like that okay your thumb is there this is in the plane, that hydrogen D which I have written. And then you are having HC front and H, HE front, this uh, index finger. And HF, that middle finger which is behind. It's like that, okay. Katora, that angle is there. It is bent, it's not straight, okay. Similarly, if you see this side, it's bent like this. So that also is there, you have to take care, okay. So that bend is kind of Katora kind of thing, okay. Trishul is there, like that, like that, like that. And this is in the plane here. So this is called a wedge and dash. And then you can make it sawhorse. So instead of showing like that, they show like that, like that, like that. I never use it because very, very confusing. But it is something like this. H is here, this side in the plane. So I put H here. HB is towards the weaver. So I put it like this. Oh, it gets confused every time. Okay. Um, depends how you look it. So probably I am wrong. Right, okay. HB will be this side. HB will be this side and HC will be this side. Okay. So probably this is what it is. See, it is confusing. I also get confused. So never use it. And then this is HD and this HE is coming front. So the way you look it at it is HE and then HF. Okay. Better way to look at it is Newman projection formula. And this will be using extensively to explain uh, uh, all these conformations. How it is? It is like this. These three bond which are front, you know, it is like this. Again, that angle is 109 degrees. It's like this, they are pushing front, okay, three. And H, H A, H B, and H C, they are something like this, okay. They are 180 degrees, uh, 109 degrees to each other. So what I have done here is basically, 
Imagine this tree is there, no? it's like that. HD, HD is my thumb, H is index finger and HF is middle finger. I've just turned whole molecule like this. So what has happened? This All three have come front, so all three I have put front, sorry, all three I have put front, but HD is down. HE which was front has gone right side, so I put uh, HE right side and HF which was behind uh, is come to the left side. HF is left side. Now when this whole molecule is lift out and this whole thing, this HA and H, uh, let us see like this, okay, HA, HB and HC, HB and HC, they have gone behind like that, okay. So that's how it has gone behind and uh, uh, you get HA behind HB and HC, okay. Uh, you have to understand this, though it looks straight, but it is like bend, okay, second katora. Right, so this is called as Newman projection formula. Now, what we have drawn is the most stable conformer for ethane between the two hydrogens, angle is 60 degrees, and it is called a staggered conformer. Okay, staggered, staggered is a very, very broad term within it, a lot of other terms are also comes, which will look soon. Okay, now this hydrogen can move 1 degrees, 2 degrees, 3 degrees. 1.1 degrees, 0 0.6 degrees, 0 0.65 degrees, 0 0.22346 degrees, any amount, okay? So it rotates a lot of angles it can rotate. And why it rotates? Because it has energy, it rotates like fan, okay? Little bit also air is there to rotate, that paper fan which you make. So it has infinite conformers. But what interests us is this and this. Why this? Because this has least amount of energy, most stable conformer, you are lying down. And this is the most unstable conformer, your dancing position. And this is eclipse. So what has happened? This hydrogen we are move, moving, rotating, 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 rotating. It comes in front of it. So when this hydrogen comes in front of it, this hydrogen also moved up to here. This hydrogen is also moved up to here. So what is happening is this bond. Basically, this this bond is what I am showing the rotation. I am rotating it like this. So this bond is rotating. And then you get this angle. All hydrogens are behind each other. This is called as eclipse conformer least stable okay what is there in your syllabus and what interests us also is butane okay so butane has four carbons one two three and four we'll talk about rotation when it happens between carbon two and carbon three rotation happens here also okay the rotation happens here also and we have all, all those conformers also but this is what interests us because it will like uh, it will uh, lead us to have uh, lead us to a lot of very interesting points, okay? So, if you see this molecule, when I put it in wedge and dash form, what happens? I am putting the CS3 is in the plane, in the plane. This CS3 in the plane, CS3 in the plane. Now, it has also two hydrogens. One will be towards the viewer, one will be away from the viewer, which I am putting. And similarly, hydrogen away from the viewer, okay? So, now these two CS3, the angle between them is 180 degrees, okay? Now what I have done is, I lifted this, imagine I just caught this CS3 and pulled it front. So it was like this, uh, CS3 is the index finger in the plane, then one hydrogen away from the viewer, that is middle finger and thumb is uh, another hydrogen towards the viewer. I rotated this whole molecule, so they both all came, all three came front. So I have put this CS3 hydrogen, hydrogen, but when I pull this whole thing, this whole thing behind went behind okay so this cs3 went behind this hydrogen hydrogen and you are getting this anti conformer okay why we call it anti because the two most bulky groups this cs3 and this cs3 are 180 degrees to each other very easy to look from here 180 degrees to each other here also you can look but here it is more clear 180 degrees this is the most stable conformer now what is very important this is also staggered because angle is still 60 degrees Staggered is a broad term in that if the most bulky groups are opposite to each other 180 degrees to each other It is called as anti-conformer Now imagine I am moving this CS3 now again. This also is infinite conformer So this can move 1 degree 2 degree 3 4 degree imagine it has moved 60 degrees Then what happened this hydrogen come exactly in front of this CS3 uh, this hydrogen When this one is rotating it's like fan you cannot rotate one one blade No, when you rotate whole blade all the three blades move so this hydrogen come in front of hydrogen. So this CS3 went in front of this hydrogen and this hydrogen went in front of this CS3, right? So what we are getting is CS3 is blocking H, H is blocking CS3, H is blocking uh, H. So now this is eclipsed. 
but not completely eclipsed because this CS3 is big hydrogen small. They don't completely eclipse, so it is partially eclipsed. Now this is very stable. This is quite unstable because it is partially eclipsed. Then imagine it is moving a little more 60 degrees. So now CS3 comes in between and, uh, and this hydrogen hydrogen. Now it is again staggered. I told staggered is a broad term. Now the two bulky groups angle is 60 degrees. So this is called as the specific term is called as gauche. G A U C H E. It's not gauche, it's gauche. Okay. So angle is 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees. Now again I am moving one degree, two degree, degree. I move 60 degrees. Now this CS3 has come on top of this CS3. This hydrogen has come below here and this hydrogen has come here. So now here what happened? Bulky is eclipsing bulky, small a eclipsing small, small eclipsing small. Now this is the most unstable conformer. Why? Because two biggest bodybuilders they are fighting each other. Maximum amount of steric index and this is called as totally eclipsed conformer. Then again you rotate 60 degrees and then comes here you get Gauss conformer and as I said before Gauss is again staggered and then you again rotate one, uh, 60 degrees and then you get partially eclipsed conformer and then you rotate again 60 degrees you come back to initial anti-conformer. Okay. So basically what are conformers are there? Anti is A, G is anti. I have given them A and G. Okay. And then partially eclipsed conformer is B and uh, F and uh, Gauss is your C and E and this is totally eclipsed conformer. So you can tell very easily which is most stable. A and G is most stable because the two bulky groups are as far as from each other possible. Okay, very stable, no fight at all. Then second after that comes is Gauss conformer. Here, here also they are not meeting each other. They are far 60 degrees far from each other, but not 180 degrees. So this is the second most stable that is your Gauss conformer. Okay, and then comes partial eclipse, very unstable, but compared to uh, like, but it is more unstable compared to this because uh, this because hydrogen is uh, is eclipsed by CS3 here also hydrogen eclipsed by CS3 now hydrogen and CS3 cannot fight very strongly it's not that unstable because they both can accommodate because this is big this is small steric index is there but not that much but this is highly unstable the most unstable is totally eclipsed conformer because two bulky groups are next to each other so that is D so this is a very very uh, favorite question of all the teachers and favorite question of all the students also because very easy to get marks. They will ask you draw all the conformers of cycloaction, major conformers cycloaction and draw the energy profile. So energy profile what do you do? So you are saying energy whichever is having higher energy. So energy goes like this and this is the angle rotation. So you started with anti-conformation two CS3s were 180 degrees to each other. Then rotated it. You moved 60 degrees, so from 180 to 240. Again, move 60 degrees, 300 degrees. Again, move 60 degrees. It became 0 degrees or 360 degrees. This is when totally eclipsed conformer was formed. Okay, and then you rotate it again 60 degrees, and then again 60 degrees. That is 120 degrees, and then again 60 degrees, 180 degrees. Okay, so you started with totally. Uh, you started with anti conformer, and then you went to partially eclipsed. And then you went to Gauss, then you went to totally eclipsed, then again to Gauss, then to partial eclipsed, and then to anti conformer. So I put A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You put next to each other and you will be able to make out. Okay. So A and G are anti conformer, most stable. Angle between the two bulkiest group is 180 degrees. Okay. And then comes B and F, that is. Uh, quite unstable that is partial eclipse conformer hydrogen and CS3 block each other and then comes Gauss so angle between them is 60 degrees and this is totally conformer uh, totally eclipsed conformer and understand this 99% the molecule stay in 99.999% actually 99.9% minimum they will stay in uh, anti conformer because that is the most stable least energy conformer in that 0.1% it will go through all other conformers. In that also the least will be totally eclipsed conformer. Okay. Thank you.